I am Ultra Llama. All right, Ultra Llama here for another game review, and uh, I've been experimenting with these a bit. I've had a few issues along the way, and so one the big thing I've been experimenting with is commenting while I'm playing and commenting after the game. So this is one I'm going to comment after the fact, and we'll see how this goes. So I'm using Snagit to record these, and I had a little issue with the last one. So I use a, a blue blocker um, called, let's see if I can bring it up here. There we go, Iris. So this is actually a really great program if you need a, a blue light blocker, if your computer's bugging your eyes, you want to sleep better. Um, this is really a great program. It's not, I don't remember how much it is, but it's not very expensive. Um, but I use this on my big monitor and uh, it's not really like when I use Snagit it's not supposed to like it's supposed to just get what the video looks like without this but for some reason it did not do that last time so I now have this back on the regular mode all right so don't know what I'm saying, my cat was bugging me there for a second. So, okay, let's start this game up, and first thing, this isn't a very good first hand, I wouldn't say. Uh, it's not bad unless the U.S. has Red Scare, though. Uh, the, the worst thing is that it's got NORAD and the U.S. Japan in it. And Blockade, because typically I'd rather hold Blockade to at least turn two, but, um... It might be a little bit difficult with NORAD and U.S. Japan. So the other thing, there's not a great headline. Arab-Israeli War is a good one, though. Olympic Games is okay, but if you think about it mathematically, Arab-Israeli War is a superior headline, I think. I mean, because Olympic Games, the expected value is actually, I think it's 1.25 VPs, whereas the expected value of Arab-Israeli War is 1 VP. So Olympic Games actually has a higher EV, but... Um, Era Israeli War also has no chance of backfiring on us, right? There's no way the U.S. gets two VPs for it. And we also get Israel, or at least we get one op in Israel. So I'm definitely going to headline Arab Israeli War. I don't think there's a great argument for anything else. Maybe Asia scoring, but we'll just play that. So here we go. And I might fast forward through parts here on the replay uh, if I see big opportunities to do so. Okay, and so my opponent here is Cedric13. I have never played this opponent before this game. I don't know if I bring up his stats. I probably do at some point. There we go. So yeah, rated 1577. A reasonable record. Looks like he has maybe slightly... a. Yeah, maybe around a 500 winning percentage, uh, but better as the USSR than the US, which is not that uncommon for most players. And, you know, I don't remember, I didn't start recording this to after the... I don't think I started recording to after the... Uh, the game join screen. So I don't remember if this was a bid game or if this was a uh, um, a US plus two random game. I guess for it's possible if it was a bid game and he had a lopsided ratio for the US that I bid one rather than two, which I normally would. All right, he's taking a while to set up. We're gonna fast forward a little bit. I don't know what he's doing here. I still don't think he's... Let's see. Keep fast forwarding. Okay, so he goes... Let's uh, watch this. So he goes 4-4-1 uh, four, four, into Europe. So, no, he did get... I don't know if... It probably was a US plus 2 game, but if it was a bid game, it was... He got 2 extra influence. But he chose to use that in France rather than Iran. So, Arab-Israeli war, he headlines the worst card we could see, Red Scare. So that sucks. And then Arab-Israeli war misses. 
All right, so probably just gonna coup a Ron since he left it so vulnerable, but I get a bad roll here as well, so not going too well for me, really. Not the only thing I got going for me is I have the three mil ops, and he doesn't have a great coup target, but uh, really everything else is going against me. Okay, and so I just go ahead and score Asia here because I know I'm not going to have the ops to really do much. And this is, I, I guess I was really surprised by this. He's going to score Middle East here. I did not expect that. And the reason I didn't expect it was because he didn't put any influence in Middle East. Um... Let's run through that real quick. He didn't put any influence in the Middle East. Uh, in the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, the pre-game, I don't know, the setup. That's what we call it. So he didn't put any influence in there. I didn't think he had Middle East, but it turns out he did. So I get burned there, and now I'm in pretty bad shape. I'm down three VPs. He's got a good position in Europe. I'm under Red Scare. I have US Japan in my hand and I gotta do something with it. I wanna hold De Gaulle an extra turn, but I don't know. So let's see. So I space Norad, that's sort of a no brainer. And we'll see what he does here. And so this is a yeah, he goes right into France. This is a pretty safe card to play Indo Pack with his position, I think, because it doesn't look like I'm going to have a good shot at getting into Pakistan anyway. I just use Fidel to stick a knob into Saudi Arabia because he's going to coup eventually, and I'd rather, in case he hits the magical six, and every time you think, well, they're not going to hit a six, they always hit a six. So I just go ahead and put that up into Saudi Arabia to protect against losing access there. But then he has Vietnam, which ends up being a great card for him. And of course, I don't get a card that I benefit really in any way from blockade. It's still a one-up, even though I get the advantage of Vietnam. And I don't, I can't remember what I did here. I mean, my guess is I either play U.S. Japan into South Korea. I, I my, that's my guess. I think I play it into South Korea, but I don't remember. Yeah, there we go. I'm not real crazy about having to invent U.S. Japan here. I just don't see a good alternative. Because I want to hold De Gaulle. And I only get one space race, which I which I think uh, NORAD's a much more important space race than US-Japan. Alright, so in turn one review he's in really good shape like he had by far the better luck this hand he's got europe domination middle east ahead he's really not even far behind in asia and so let's look at my hand here real quick so let's see i can't remember if defectors came out the previous hand Did I have defectors? I can't remember. But if I didn't, if no one had defectors, and DeGaulle's an, almost a no-brainer here. Though I still think I probably headline DeGaulle. Maybe CNS. CNS is the only other thing I'd consider headlining here. So let's see what I did. I went with DeGaulle. And of course he had Marshall. So he's had an abundance of luck here early. I, on the other hand, have had a lot of low-op hands. Well, one low-op hand, I should say. And a lot of bad rolls. But I am going to take France here, I'm pretty sure. Probably use a uh, nuclear test ban to do it.
And I don't know what I was doing there. But there we go. Nuclear test ban into France. So that helps a lot because now I can at least score... I can't get European domination, but I can at least score Europe for one VP. You know, that's better than losing five VPs. So six VP shift there. But Marshall basically rules out domination. See, and I don't necessarily like that move by him. It's not terrible, but I don't think he really even has to worry about me dominating Europe. I think I'm probably going to score Europe here. Yeah, all right. So we're back at an even game. Somehow I missed, I, I think I must have played CNS and I don't know how I missed that. All right, well I did play CNS in there. So that's how I'm back at even on the scoreboard. And I don't remember what he does with this. He doesn't have like, I don't know what I would do if I were him actually. I think I'd play into Afghanistan and maybe Costa Rica. And then maybe just, I don't know about the third one, maybe go into Egypt. So he's trying to protect against the Panama coup, but I think, uh, and see, I keep having awful luck, another one roll. Um, I think playing the up in the Costa Rica would have been better there than putting an extra one in the Panama. So I'm thinking I probably, I don't know what I'd do with this right now, but I'm probably going to end up taking South Korea. I, I guess I got to definitely get ops into the Middle East because I'm in pretty bad shape there. He makes this weird move where he plays Suez into France. And, you know, one thing about doing these reviews in the high, like, commentating afterwards, I can't see what was taken out of the deck, so I don't necessarily remember. I'm guessing the reason I put a bunch of ops into France is because now De Gaulle and Suez is gone, and I'm worried that he's planning some sort of Truman thing on the last turn, or the last action round. He just throws a bunch of ops into France and then plays Truman. So I went ahead and just overprotected it by a lot. Uh, and I took South Korea, but we're in crap shape in the Middle East, as you might be able to tell. So I'm probably going to put one... Yeah, he's just loading up in the Middle East, but I'm probably just going to... Yeah, one into Syria and hope to God he doesn't coup it. <laughs> That's all I can say. I'd much rather in coup somewhere else or not coup at all that would be okay I don't really have any reason I need him to coup I haven't had any access cards like d stall or d call so yeah there's Truman he decides to dump it after but luckily he misses the roll so we still get a VP, and we maintain some presence in the Middle East. So the great thing on this hand, and I'll pause again, is that we have D-Stall. Um, Independent Reds is okay, too. We only got one op into Yugoslavia, so it's not really a big deal. We got Truman, which is good because you can get rid of it. Now the question is, what do I headline here? So I think defectors had not come out yet. Uh, but I can't really headline CIA, I don't think. Because, yeah, because DNC, he could have DNC and that would end the game. And Arab-Israeli wars benefits are much more limited this time. I'm thinking I headline Truman. 
Let's see what I did. Maybe I headline CIA though. I don't know. That would be a very risky move. Oh wait, you know what? I definitely. Okay, I'll take it back here. Defcon's at four, so I definitely headline CIA. If Defcon's at three, it's a totally different situation. But a Defcon four, which is unusual here, um, CIA's not a bad move because I mean. He can defector it, and I guess that's just okay. I mean, it can end up in the late war deck again, but I don't really mind having it defectored so that he doesn't see my hand, though he probably knows most of my hand anyway, so it's not too huge of a deal. I still think, like, for him, like, defectoring CAA might still be okay and I'm gonna pause for a second here all right we're back here so I gotta remember where we were so I headlined CIA he defectored it and and I could Panama right is that what happened so he's gonna coup Egypt I'm going to go ahead, yeah, I would go ahead and take Lebanon here. And there's a lot of things to do. Looks like I just go ahead and play d stall maybe? I don't know, I could see an argument for taking Lebanon instead, though. Let's see. Okay, so that is what I did. Primarily because he knows I have a d stall and I need to... I want to get as much of Africa as possible. But there's a case for, you know, going into Lebanon here. Well, the other reason I think I ended up playing d -Stall was because he doesn't have a way to get to Thailand. So yeah, that was probably the reason I went for d -Stall over... The biggest reason why I went for d -Stall over taking Lebanon right there. Alright. And so I think he makes a mistake actually even trying to contest for Thailand here. I think he should have just gone for... Algeria so now I'm able to get Algeria and so I think he's had better luck other than me getting d -stall. I think that ends up being a very big mistake in this game for him and we're gonna see it comes back to haunt him later I think and I could be wrong actually I don't remember exactly what happened in this game but I'm thinking that is probably one of those that did not go well for him so I play I played had to play d style before Truman so I could get some of those ops out of Austria and Yugoslavia because otherwise they were just going to get Truman away anyway. And so, and the game is definitely flipped at this point. I mean, he was in very good shape turn one and turn two, but d style coupled with, you know, just a few mistakes on his part, not you know, not getting up to Malaysia to contest Thailand and then not going to Algeria, or I should say not going to Malaysia till it was too late, and then not going into Algeria when he had the opportunity. So, even though he's probably had the better luck, I mean, you can debate it. Now that I have d -Stall, my luck's improved a bit. But I think those two mistakes end up being pretty critical. So I still don't have a lot of ops here. Um, I think what I'm probably going to do is... I think I probably put a third op into Venezuela. I don't know what I did with the other one. Maybe Libya? Could also be Argentina. Okay, so I just go ahead and overprotect Thailand. That's fine too. Now the downside is... If he gets the dot, he can wipe me out of Egypt. And I don't have a way to get back immediately. But if I think he might make a move in Thailand, this also makes sense. So pretty standard here with Warsaw Pact. So I, I end up putting two into Austria rather than two into East Germany. I just have a lot of ops in there already, and I decide to go that route. But that's pretty a minor difference. I mean, I could have put the two into East Germany as well. It doesn't really matter. 
All right, so we held on to five-year plan, um, which could conceivably be useful, but maybe not. All right, so now we got an interesting hand. So the game is really flipped. I now have a three VP lead. I'm now in a good shape in good shape in South America and Africa and Asia as well. I flipped. Middle East a little bit when he played Nasser. I mean, he's still ahead, but not by much. So what do I headline here? We know Defectors is gone. I think Africa's maybe a little bit riskier. I think with three scoring cards, it's kind of tough to get real aggressive with your headlines because you otherwise you're just going to have a hand with no ops. I'm thinking I probably headline Central America. I, I honestly don't like this move, but it's sort of tough with three scoring cards. I, I could have headlined Middle East as well. I don't think I headlined Africa, but it could be Central America and Middle East. I could headline Decal as well, but I think I would go with Central America. And my thought is that, you know, if he has something like Janta, he's going to get the advantage anyway. There's probably not much I can do, so I might as well just try to take those two VPs while I can. So we go ahead and coup Iran, and that works pretty well. And so the lead's only 5 VP still, but... The game is definitely looking much more favorable. And spoiler alert, this game changes very rapidly. Alright, so Libya and Saudi Arabia make sense. And the reason, I mean, maybe it's obvious the reason, but I have Middle East scoring in my hand, but I also have OPEC. So I'm really trying to, it's really trying to do both. I, I actually expect him to take Israel here and that I'm just going to score Middle East for even, and that's fine. I, I'm really trying to get those four OPEC VPs more than anything. And if I just luck up and he doesn't take Israel, then I can get, uh, what is it, a four VP score in Middle East as well. And I think uh, if you see what I was moving my card there, I was potentially debating using five-year plan on Middle East. Okay, so he plays VOA here, and it ends up not being that effective because I got decal. I just go right back into Africa. So I opt to put it in Southeast Asia. I could try to put an op into like somewhere like Zimbabwe or Sudan um, to try to get African domination, but I didn't. I think in my head, my thought is that it was going to be tough to get African domination with all these scoring cards in my hand because he's obviously going to probably have more ops than me. And so he gets puppet governments here, which is a big card for him. I go ahead and score Middle East for three. So the game is, you know, it's starting to... I'm looking in better shape, but he's still like... This puppet governments and VOA combination is pretty big, so I'll just pause it for a second. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So the public government's VOA combination is pretty big. That gets him into South America. So even though I have the VP lead, he's certainly not out of it. However, it's really swung in my favor because he made a big mistake not playing into Israel and trying to block my domination in the Middle East. So that's three VPs. Um, he probably couldn't do anything to stop OPEC, so I was going to get those four anyway. But then let's go back to the Africa decision, right? I'm up three VPs in Africa. 
I'd only be up one if he had taken Algeria. So maybe it's not huge, but it's this is a game where it's like these little things started to add up for him. And sometimes that's just how it is. So he has to use this, and that's fine. He only loses one VP now, rather than three. But having Algeria would have been a better, you know, position than having Angola, which I can flip later. So the game is starting like it's really, you know, I wouldn't have guessed it got this lopsided based on turn one and turn two, where it looked like it was very much in his favor. And the mid war is normally in the US's favor, but it's really just a combination of small mistakes that ended up being like that ended up adding up into big mistakes over time and just me getting sort of lucky scoring some of these scorecards with advantages when i probably shouldn't have been able to so he uses that but then now i've got a 15 vp lead that's a really big lead and he's in a little bit more danger now and so here's the penultimate turn here I now have, we will bury you in my hand. Now, I think you and intervention was still outstanding. So this was not a slam dunk, but I'm thinking this is what I headlined here because I'm looking at this game and I don't necessarily know that the long term favors me. I mean, it's not bad, certainly, but... Like, he's going to tie up Asia at the very minimum. I'm still, I really just have a 1 VP lead in Europe. I mean, he could conceivably flip that later on if he gets tear down this wall. I'm in good shape in the Middle East, but not, like, Sadat negates my Egypt position. He could take Israel, so he could get domination there, too. Africa's always real swingy. He's in much better shape in South America because he's got three battlegrounds and then all these mid-war cards favor him like OAS and Panama Canal. Um, and then, you know, Linde, you know, maybe that favors me, but it's not really that big because I can't take Chile with it. I have to have some weird situation where I'm able to get two action rounds to take it. So like maybe Quagmire. So, and then really Central America is going to be easy to flip as well. So, I'm looking at this board like I'm not necessarily in great shape for the long term. I can maybe get into good shape for the long term, but I'm not there yet. But I do have We Will Bury You, and it would get me to 18 VPs. And if I space, it gets me to 20 VPs. So I go ahead and play that. This might not be my first headline if I was up by 3 VPs. I mean, it might still be because... Yeah, I probably still headline it, actually, just because he played in North Korea, and I don't really have a better headline. I don't want to use Lone Gunman yet. So, I'm just going to go ahead and resolve our man. And the reason I'm resolving our man is because there's not, like, a lot of big scorecards for me anymore, and I got Lone Gunman in my hand, so... I mean, yeah, he could discard some good Soviet events, but... There's not a lot. So he does get Liberation Theology. But that's the only one that's really bad for me. And so this game gets really weird really quick. So I forgot to do my Ultra Llama routine until turn 5. And there I go. So, you know, right now at this point in the game, I'm thinking, does he have you in Intervention? Because if he has you in Intervention, my Gambit didn't pay off i mean it's still okay because i did get north korea but uh we will bury you ends up being irrelevant so let's see let's fast forward he takes a while so he does not play it and instead this is a really weird move by him he plays quagmire and i don't know why he plays quagmire here i think this is so he sort of has a bunch of maybe minor errors that just by bad luck turn into major errors so i don't want to i don't want to like overstate it there because they really are kind of minor errors but it's just that i kind of got lucky that i was able to take advantage of them but this on the other hand this is a self-induced error um i don't know why he 
plays Quagmire on himself here. I He must have had a bad hand, but I don't know what could have been bad enough to play Quagmire. I space, game over. And that's it. So this one's not a very long game, but sort of interesting how quick it swung. I mean, based on turn one, it looked like he was a heavy favorite. And even after turn two, I would say he had much better position than I did. But let's see if this, there we go. So even after turn two, he had much better position. The decal, or sorry, the destall changed things a lot though. And then just these little tiny errors added up over time. Me being able to get into Thailand because he hadn't played into Malaysia. Me being able to get to Algeria because he tried to go for Thailand too late. Um, and then South America doesn't come out in time to save him. Now you notice, like I have to give him, I have to give him Camp David, or maybe I could have. Actually, I think I did have another space, so I could have spaced Camp David actually. Uh, but still, I mean, if he could have just found a way to scrape out a few more points, uh, I don't think this is a a game that's over by any stretch of the imagination. It's possible. To come back from the situation if he just finds a way to be only down like 15 VPs here. Uh, he's got a great spot in South America. He could pretty easily wipe me out of South America entirely. He could flip Europe late game. He could he could maybe flip Asia. Because um, I'm going to have to event Yasuri. But I think you know I'm probably going to use some of those ops from the other cards to prepare for that. So... Asia will probably be a little bit more difficult, but it's possible. He can flip Middle East. He's actually not in the worst situation there. Albeit Muslim Revolution and the Iranian hostage crisis could also bite him. But it's not a game that's over. So that's the thing I want to emphasize. Um, even though the scoring card luck shifted in my favor quickly, this was not this was not a game that was lost for him. Um, but I did have pretty good luck with the scorecards here. So that's it for this one. Uh, check out some more. And until then, I am Ultra Llama! All right, bye-bye.